Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another Diablo 4 campfire chat. Uh, my name is Adam Fletcher. I am the associate director of Diablo. Joined here by Joe Shelley, game director for Diablo 4. Mr. Joe Pipora, which you guys know of, because, and Joe as well, I guess. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Janusz Pipiura. Hey, uh, Joe Shelley, to... For, uh, hey, Brzezki, to college, just did you have a reason you just screwed up, eh? Adam Jackson, brand new face here. Uh, he is our lead class designer for Lead Diablo class 4. designer. Um, we have a lot to talk about today. Yep. In fact, uh, just just note, there's two Adams, two Joes. Adam so Jaskowski, really Janusz here. Przepiura. Um, and we were thinking about, like, Maybe we do like a battle. Janek Skrupa like i Adam Łuczarz. Determine who talks no. next or whatever. But, uh, I will say we, we actually zrobić. do have a lot to talk about. Um, in fact, Adam I Łuczarz. would almost say this is like dev update uh, uh, yeah. stream worthy. So as at least Campfire to, Plus. Campfire yeah. Plus, yeah. yeah. yeah plus Plus. Yeah. It's like New Game Plus Plus or whatever. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 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 um, uh, but we do have a lot to talk about, uh, specifically around patch 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. Did I say enough ones? Yeah, you did. 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1, 1, 1. Patch 1.1.1. 1, 1, 1. We did. Um, we are going to talk about uh, some yeah, balance changes that are going to be coming uh, to that patch. Uh, of course, we're also going to be talking about uh, the dates of when that patch is actually going to be hitting, uh, along with when uh, players will be seeing, seeing the patch notes, which will be well before the actual patch. Shelly, I don't have any presence before the camera. Um, I know uh, we do want to jump right into it because we do have a ton to talk about. Uh, so uh, I will actually throw it over here to Adam Jackson because I know he wants to talk a little bit about uh, kind of like the class balance and what we're thinking about for uh, one one one. Yeah, totally. Uh, glad to be here. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah. So, um, first I want to kind of frame this in our goals and what we're <laughs> going to be doing in this patch in the immediate future, and then talking a little bit about kind of how the class team feels about classes and kind of what we're thinking in a more mid to long term space. So, for this patch, uh, we've got a lot going on. Um, one of our goals is kind of, I think, obviously the community. We want to kind of improve the effectiveness and, and the fun of the sorcerer and the barbarian. So we've got a lot of changes coming in there, and I think I want to frame this in two ways. Fajnie, że zwiększą fan grania każdą klasę, ale moglibyście przy okazji dodać tego fanu z grania w grę, nie? Kind of different things going on. For the sorcerer in this patch, we're focusing on reducing something that we call kiss curse mechanics, which is kind of I know very designer term, but it's this idea that we give you a really cool power effect, and then we kind of take something away or make it nerfed or nerf some other part of you in some way, usually for balance reasons, um, to make sure that it's not just, you know, out of control and power. Yeah, usually the idea there is, like, to your point, it's like, so we can, we really have, like, you know, 20% we can afford to give you, but if we take 10% of something else away, we can give you 30% or yeah. 35% and feel a little bit better about that. Exactly. Usually it's to sell a fantasy in a really strong way, but we can't, like, do that justifiably without just breaking the, the mechanic. <laughs> Um, but we found out in a lot of ways we've been uh, a little too harsh with that, and so we're going to try and reduce or remove that in some cases. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is late game survivability. Uh, we know that the sorcerers typically have a, a tough time, you know, when they start getting pushing those later night tier, nightmare dungeon tiers, and so we're going to be looking at ways to increase that specifically. Um, and an example of that his curse mechanic is uh, the serpentine aspect. If you know that one, it's the one where you can spawn an additional hydra, but it reduces the duration of your hydras. Um, that's just no longer going to reduce the duration. It's actually going to increase it. So that's an example of something we'll go through wow. later. Did you uh, for the barbarian, we're focusing on improving the early game and making it feel better, just more fluid. Um, we're going to be improving the fury generation that you get from your basic skills. And then we're also looking at the late game for the barbarian by uh, making a lot of their uniques more attractive hey, and is So chance we're going to see later on the notes that, um, you know, we're going to be changing around usually it's about one half of so unique that from something that really isn't that attractive for players to something that they really, really want, which we think will help make those items really exciting. Yeah, now, when we make changes to items, uh, specifically items like uniques, mm -hmm. um, th many of these changes uh, only take effect on new items, right? Like, I think we have an example of a hell, of the Hellhammer here. Yeah, kind of. Um, it's a little bit more complex than that. So we're going to delve into one of our examples of what we're updating here. Um, but when we update a unique item, um, we actually update Hellhammer in two different ways. So we're increasing the duration that the ground is going to be ignited and burning, and then we're also increasing the damage. And that's the actual unique effect power, you know, the exciting thing that the item is. You can see here on Hellhammer, Hellhammer, we're also doing another change where we're actually granting you a bonus critical strike damage and removing the bonus damage of crowd control enemies, right? So on the left, what you see here, when you log into the game, you know, after this patch, 
the left version is what you're going to get. So you're not going to get the critical strike damage changes to the actual item affix there, the, the rule change. But you are going to get the updates to the upheaval, blasting longer. On the right, when you find your new items after the patch, you're going to get the, the new uh, affixes, the new rules and things on the item. So new, new, new versions of these items will have all of the buffs we're talking new about. New versions right? will have everything new. And the old versions will get the new stuff on the actual legendary effects, but then you'll have, you won't have the new item stats on it. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, so going back to kind of other things that we're looking at. So that's the Sorcerer and the Barbarian what we're focusing on. Then generally across all classes, we're doing a few other things as well. Um, we're looking at builds that aren't really hitting a high enough power level, and we're going to be just buffing them and increasing the power of them so they should feel better and be more competitive. Um, we're also going to be looking at increasing the attractiveness of kind of uniques across the board. We're focusing on Sorcerer and Barbarian for this patch. But we actually believe that we can do this kind of thing across the board. There's a lot of uniques that we think aren't really hitting the mark. Um, it's something that's kind of a, a tough thing that we talk about a lot on the team. Because, you know, the, the roles and the things that the uniques have as far as their item power are all fixed, right? They can't re-roll different stats all over the place. So we could very easily just make, you know, all uniques really good by putting all the best stats on the items, right? That's an easy thing to do for us. But we kind of have a push and pull there where we don't want to just make all of them clearly the best items in the game because they have all the best stats and they have really good powers. We want there to be something that's really unique and attractive about them and you have to kind of think of how you're going to fit these into your character's build. Um, no, but we think that we are just not hitting the mark on a lot of them, so we're using them a little bit and then just kind of see how that goes. Um, Next, we're going to be looking at opening up build specific yeah, designs. Yeah, to yeah, so, yeah. so there's a lot of um, effects on like powers and in other order. places where you know, this effect only works in a very narrow use case, like only on a single skill, or a single group of skills, or you know, we're using a certain proc to get it. And in many cases, we're just going to open that up to be more widely yeah, usable, so that players can actually, you know, use them in more different builds or in more different ways. Uh, one example of this that we'll go over later is um, Chain Lightning's upgrade, Ch Greater Chain Lightning. Currently, it gives you bonus, the, the bounces of Chain Lightning do bonus damage when it bounces off of you. And we're going to change oh, that so that just does bonus damage when it bounces off of anything. So instead of being kind of a narrow use case where you're okay. only using it like on a boss or a single target enemy and getting Logic value, no, you'll just no. get it a lot more often now. Yeah, it feels like a much better like lightning range skill now in that way. I can diff it's easier for me to clear packs. So it's good. I like that. Yeah, totally. So that's kind of what we're looking at for this not patch. The fun, yeah? Okay, so we've t we talked last, uh, <laughs> last week about um, sort of our things that we want to do like going forward in the game, other things we want to do, not all of that stuff is in this patch. Yeah, right? no, we, we have a lot of talks on our team. We have a lot of things that we're thinking about and going on. I thought it'd be really good also to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, how we feel about more longer term goals and things about the game. So um, these aren't coming in this patch, but things that we're thinking about that'll come in the future. Of builds that aren't only those in mind, right? I guess it does need to take a look at the time or damage, um, things like Firewall um, or Shadow Necro does a lot of this. Uh, we also have Overpower as a mechanic in our game, and these other different MPG ways to build your character. We want them to have parity with, you know, vulnerable and crit damage. So we're going to be trying to find, we're, look, our goal is to find a way, and we're working on it right now, that all those different ways of dealing damage have a lot of parity. So no matter if you're an Overpower build or crit build or a, you know, a damage over time build, you will be relatively equal in power to all of the other different types of ways to play. Um, so another one that we're looking at is adding scaling to builds and effects that don't really scale very well in the game. This is something that I think is a big opportunity for us to open up just excitement in different builds in the game. And what I mean by this is we have a lot of legendary powers and effects that like spawn a new thing. For example, this is like on the Barbarians, uh, uh, Earthquakes, or uh, Dust Devils. Yeah, this flag I don't know what it is, LGBT, the Transgender, how like these shadow shells on the ground. Transgender, chyba, nie? And these things, they deal what we call flat damage, which is like we give it a damage number, and then that's how much it does, and then that damage number kind of scales with player level. Um, but what we find is that a lot of these things are really good in the early and mid game when they drop, but then when you get to the really late game, they, they kind of fall off really hard. Um, and what we want to do is find ways to add scaling so that the player can opt into, like making a build out of these things. So if I want to be an Earthquake Barbarian or a Dust Devil Barbarian, I can actually do that and it's the game. Um, so that's something that we're really excited about because we think that will open up a lot more build possibilities. 
Ultimates are kind of in this range as well, which is more long-term goal. But similarly, you know, a lot of ultimates are really strong in the early and mid game. You take it, it blows up the screen, feels great. And then the late game, a lot of ultimates that we see that are used are just used because they buff the player in some way. Yeah, they don't blow up the screen the same way anymore. Yeah, right. I want you to be excited to use Bone Storm because Bone Storm is awesome, not because it gives you a buff, right? Or, you know, Grizzly Rage or other ones, right? So that's kind of something that we're thinking about uh, in the mid to long term to, to make the game kind of open up and have more builds available. So we've been talking here a little bit about <coughs> sort of our philosophy here. We're about to get into patch notes. We're about to talk about Sorcerer. Um, but we thought that yeah, it was important to talk a little bit about this philosophy, both because we want to be um, very transparent in terms of like how we're thinking about the game and what kinds of, like why we're making changes, um, both so that uh, when you see changes, you can understand what we're, th what we're thinking. Blizzard, like, który na każde for. pytanie odpowiada, so that, um, myślimy o tym, mówi, że chce uh, być can, bardziej transparentny, uh, kurwa. Może to jest flaga yeah, transparentności, you know, może o to chodzi. Może to jest flaga transparentności, particular live stream, right? Yeah. So like we're going to go through a lot of details really really soon, which I think people are really excited about. Takich nie ogarniają, słuchajcie, gier komputerowych, to może polityki też nie ogarniają. Im chodziło o transparency, a nie stwierdzili, że to jest transgender. A lot of good data from us and do you understand why we're doing making the changes that we are? Right? And to Joe's point, again, it is really useful for you to understand these things. It's going to help with the feedback that you give us back. We know whether we're hitting it or not. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry, is, guys, is like so we're, we're, we're actually going to see a ton of slides here in a second. Uh, going to pretty much all the different uh, details and changes that are coming out. Uh, 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 like we saw in the game, like we said, we do plan on uh, releasing like patches so that you guys can actually read more detail. And in those patches, we'll see you know, additional information. Like all the bug fixes and so forth. We'll see you in the game. We'll see you in the game. Do we know when we're getting the, uh, we plan on releasing those? Uh, so we are, look at this, you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're we, we had just, planned just this to talk about it later, sorry, and dude. now, like, oh, sorry. I know, now, now, now you're just gonna spoil it. We're actually gonna release patch notes, uh, full patch notes. You guys will see, uh, these patch notes first here on the stream, but we'll, we'll we will release, uh, patch notes next Wednesday, uh, on August 2nd, so that everyone oh. will end up seeing it. We'll talk Przyszło. about the patch date here. At the end of the stream, we're closer oh, to the end of the stream. Yeah. 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 Ye
Bonus um, Burning Damage increase from 20-30 to 20-30. Bonus... Uh, Oni próbują Fire Stones tej jakoś przeforsować, ale... O, tu jest dobry buff, dwukrotny. Aspect of Engulfing Flames. Burning Bonus Damage increase from 30-30 to 60-80. Czyli z tej increase zbliża Strength Damage of Meteor and Fireball by 20-30. Um, the next one is pretty good is gravitational aspects. Uh, this one was the it used to reduce your damage uh, to, in exchange for the lightnings orbiting around you. Now we're going to increase it. So again, that's a pretty big swing in power. Um, next, we've got a recharging aspect. This one was kind of similar to the change that we did to chain lightning uh, to that bonus baseline. It used to only give you mana when it bounced off of you. Now it's going to give you mana when it bounces off of everything. So again, a lot more useful. Um, and in combination with that, I'm broken tether and chain lightning players are going to be eaten pretty this patch. Uh, we're also increasing the bonuses of chain lightning that you get when that proc happens. Oh, four dodge cover bounce and a chain lightning. Lots of chain lightning bounces. Lots of things should be really fun. Um, we're also putting a new legendary into the game. Uh, this is the Mage Lord's aspect. This one makes your Veer's mastery key passive, the damage reduction there, uh, damage reduction there, uh, be increased by quite a bit so that you can survive uh, when you're in that melee range. And let me see here, some uh, sto aspect. Snow Veiled Aspect is getting a pretty big generic buff, where before it just gave you Unstoppable when you used uh, Frost Armor. I believe that's got to be Frost Armor. And then, but now it also gives you uh, bonus armor when you use it as well, just generally more useful. Um, incendiary Aspect terrifies me, but we're doing it. This one used to be that it, uh, it, it propped off of all of your burning damage. So your burning damage could give you mana, and now it's going to just do it off of your pyromancy skills damage. So this opens up meteor, fireball, all of those other skills that aren't really fireball. Oh, that's fine, Zmiana. Lucky hit, my chance. I think that's good for that one. And then for uniques, we've got the gloves of the illuminator. Um, this is the one where your fireballs bounce and deal AOE damage. Uh, before, when you got this, it was kind of in a very weird place where the the bounces could do it pretty often in such a way where you'd only hit an enemy once with a bounce. And we have to put this damage penalty on it because, you know, you can hit enemies multiple times with it, and it's AoE, and gives you a bunch of procs of all of your stuff, so it's really, really strong. Um, but because you can only hit an enemy once, a lot of times it's just a damage nerf the Fireball. Yeah, one time on the monster, and yep. that was that. And now yeah. we, we, you got nerfed so again, and you can grab another few skills. So we reduce the us. distance that it bounces a little bit, so it should be more easy, or easier to... Uh, you can't even the penalty twice. And then we also reduce that damage penalty, so now no matter what, if you hit an enemy twice, it's a damage bonus. Um, and then we also replace one of his affix, affixes from damage to stunned to lucky hit to... Ale czemu to się po prostu nie może dawać bounce na fireballu? The lucky hit procs are very powerful. Ja nie czaję, stary, totalnie tego nie kminie, no. Niech te glowsy będą fun to play, no jak i pikniesz. Ja barwy mnie grę mnie znam się. We're increasing the fury generation of all of those basic skills. 30% więcej fury, to jest dużo z generacji. You know, do that basic core skill loop a little more often, so it should be more fun. Uh, double swings gain a damage buff, ruptures gain a damage buff, charges gain a damage buff, and um, one of the enhancements is increasing that vulnerable duration, so it should hopefully be more attractive. One one thing I do want to note is like even on the if we go back to the other slide, like sure. a lot of people are going like Fury gain eleven to thirteen. Ale jest ten problem z tymi. To jest. Wiecie, jaki oni robią błąd? Największy błąd leży w tym, że ta gra po prostu nie jest fun to play, nie? Nawet jeżeli Fireball będzie endgame'owo zadawał dużo damage'a, po prostu dużo damage'a, to to nadal nie jest fun to play. I te zmiany tego nie nie zmieniają. Mixes in with with whether you. Oni nie kminią tego, że oni muszą tym aspektom nadać bardzo mocno unikalnego efektu, żeby nagle łączenie tych aspektów było ciekawe, tak jak w poe, no nie? Że masz na przykład aspekt, że za każdym razem, gdy ty używasz skilla, to przyzywa się twój klon i on też kasuje tego skilla, nie? Twój fireball się odbija trzy razy zawsze. Zero damage penalty. Twój fireball się odbija, nie? Od ściany od przeciwniku. Gdy twój fireball zabije wybuchem jakiegoś przeciwnika, to dodatkowo wybuchają jego zwłoki, nie? Albo nie wiem, podpala się ziemia, tu takich efektów nie ma. Cześć, 
Um, we're increasing the scaling of your bleed to crit damage, and then also your bleed damage when you no. have power. Parę godzin przed exile kodem dałem więcej powodów, żeby wpaść na stream z GG. Nie, nie wiem, stary, kto to ogarnia. Um, walking Arsenal is another one worth calling out here. Uh, we heard some feedback that you know it's really hard to keep up all three. Diablo cztery jest taką grą, w którą się nie chce grać. Bo wszystko wygląda cały czas tak samo. I w momencie, w którym tutaj zdobywasz aspekt, no to na przykład dostajesz aspekt, że twój fireball się odbija, ale zadaje 50% damage tylko. No to kurwa. To nie jest tak, że ty zakładasz aspekt i nagle wiesz, czy fajny przypływ, nie? Że ty dostajesz nowego support drzewa. I czujesz, że twój build zaczyna działać inaczej i potem szukasz kolejnej rzeczy, która się zazębi z pierwszą rzeczą. Nie, tu nie ma tego, kurwa. Stary już bonus damage i, i, i tyle, nie? Torrents się zbuffowali, wow. Te Torrents to jest taka beka, bo oni to próbują od Diablo 3 przeforsować. I musieli jednego builda całej klasy i cały set zbudować wokół Torrentsów, żeby w ogóle działał. All right, next, so uniques. We've got a lot of stuff here with barbarian uniques. Again, the kind of a high level goal here is we're generally improving just the base thing the unique does and then also trying to replace an item uh, stat that wasn't very attractive or not as attractive with one that we know players really, really like to make these attract these uh, meaningful for them. So Fields of Crimson, this is the one where you do blood pools when you rupture enemies. Um, we're increasing the damage. We're increasing the damage that enemies take standing in pools, which is a pretty big buff. And then we're also changing the rupture cooldown reduction with bonus crit strike damage. And again, combine that with the bonus in the key passive where the, the lead damage that, that scales better. Um, that'll just be quite a bit more damage across the board. Um, Hellhammer we talked about. Um, Ramalandi's magnum opus, we're replacing the physical so damage affix with vulnerable damage. Um, 100,000 steps. Uh, the base affix of the boots, uh, we're replacing the evade cooldown affix with just more evade charges. And then we're also replacing the damage against stun enemies with bonus movement speed, which you'll see a couple times in boots that we're doing because we know how attractive that stat is. Um, oh. Let's talk oh, about sorry. it. So, <laughs> I was just going to say we, we said uh, that uh, we were going to buff uh, Sorceress and Barbarian. We we're going to make some changes hey, one-on-one. Yep. On one. Blizzard uh, but, um, totally nie potrafi um, robić patch notes. Uh, nie przedstawić to z siana tekstu. Nie przedstawić w taki sposób, żeby to było łatwe do zrozumienia. No porównaj się to do na przykład patch notesów z Doty 2, nie? Jezu, to wygląda tak źle. Kto wie, co to jest Invigorating Strike? Bez widzenia ikonki tego, nie? Rogues are actually, I think, eating pretty well right now, so they're pretty good, which is a pretty big, just generic bonus. Uh, we got some feedback on Reign of Arrows that it was kind of weird that the second wave was the one that knocked all the enemies down because a lot of times, you know, you cast a skill and the combat is in a certain state where the enemies are where you want to hit them and probably where you want to CC them because you usually want to group stuff up to CC them. Mm -hmm. But because it happens on the second wave, you know, the first wave comes, does a little damage to everything. They all move. And then they all move and then everything goes <laughs> and falls apart, right? So this just makes it more reliable. It sets itself up. It sets itself up, yeah, exactly. Um, here, let me look if there's anything noteworthy. There's some buffs to things that are underused. Um, so the aspect of the of menace uh, no longer requires Oni każdą zmianę liczbową zwiększyli o 10% jela. Od 5 do 10% pierwszej wartości, nie? And then for uniques, kind of similar to Barbarian, we found some room here to make a couple stats replaced with things that we know are really, really attractive. So All stats affix to replace with variable damage. damage. A oni nie mówili na poprzednim gatheringu, sorry, campfire chat, so że nie chcą buffować variable bez GTP i im się to nie podoba. We're also improving all the spirit generation of the druid's basic skills. So across the board, you're just going to be able to get to those core skill casts a little bit easier. We're also improving the, the passive damage generally of a lot of their companion skills. So your wolves are going to feel better. Um, the both passive and active damage is going up. The upgrades Jezu, no wielki, wielki... Jezu, to jest 3% buffa damage. And then same thing for ravens. Their passive 7, damage is going 11. up. And then brutal ravens. This is the one that gives you another little, uh, a couple more little ravens to go peck your enemies to death. Um, they're also going to peck a little bit harder. So 
a little bit more uh, fantasy fulfilling. Jak coś to miniony, żeby były w ogóle sensowne, to powinny dostać buffa, tak 300% damage do wrażenie. Poison Druid is a little bit behind, so we're really targeting Ravies as a a pretty meaty upgrade there in its damage. This will also, by the way, improve the legendary. I think it's legendary where your wolves can cast Ravies. That's also going to be improved by this. So just that whole archetype will be better. Um, and then for legendaries and the class mechanic, we're just buffing some things that are a little bit underutilized. So just be stronger. Tak, ty mógłbyś sprzedać ludziom produkt, ja nie byś go testowali, to byś płacił za komuś, żeby się go testować. Enhanced Bone Spirit, which is where when you crit enemies with the Bone Spirit, you get cooldown reduction. We're increasing that from 6 to 7 seconds, so it should be a little a little more friendly to players in the current state of the game. Uh, the Wither Legendary upgrade here, this is the one where your shadow dot damage uh, is going up. And we added a new way to scale that damage to the Legendary space. Uh, Wiesz, albo sprzedać really komuś grę za 90 euro i on się ustosuje, albo musisz komuś so zapłacić, musi przyjść do ciebie do biura i jeszcze musisz odczyć się pokusie niezmolestowania go. Dla nich te dwie rzeczy są bardzo ciężkie, więc wybierają graczy jako testerów. But you used, the way that this used to work was Sever would spawn a pool of light under enemies and the chance was based on you critting them. So the idea was you would create a crit build and then you turn your crit into these pools of damage, right? That sounds kind of cool. But it turns out, you know, crit doesn't work with dots at all. So that pool doesn't get scaled with the way that you make the pool. So it just doesn't work uh, design-wise. I take the blame for that. But now hey, it changes, so you just have to ja obstawiam, że oni napiszą, że będzie 20% więcej potworów. Ta gra chyba nie dźwignie więcej, ja 20% obstawiam. And then here, let me see, probably one of the big ones to call it, even though it's just a number buff, is Aspect of Torment. Uh, that Essence Regeneration was just woefully undertuned, so we increase it pretty significantly. Um, Hulking Aspect, nice. this one, um, I'm hoping you guys see more play. This used to be a resource legendary, which I, looking at it now, was a little weird, because it doesn't actually give you resource, it's just cooldown reduction on the golem skill. Um, so we're going to move that to a utility, so now you can put this like on your boots and other places that you, you didn't have to, and it doesn't have to... Take that prime rain slot. Chance to golem spawn a corpse increase from 0.52 to 1 to 2.5. Um, Unique's kind of similar to what I said before. The greaves of the empty tomb. Uh, we're in, uh, changing the bonus intelligence affix to be so much... bonus move speed, which I know is particularly attractive for necromancer players. Yeah, mobility for necromancers. Well, yeah, well, necromancers they make more mobility a little bit. I usually the, the slower, the slower uh, 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 individuals in the group. So yeah, yeah, yeah. helping them out a little bit. Um, here, this is a, a monster change, but it impacts minions really. So necromancer and druid. But these attacks now from the Belrog and some elite affixes are going to be re dealing reduced damage to necromancer minions and druid companions. Ej, so your attacks will just die less often. So can we just say that the next stage in which we're in this season, like how many of these buffs will be like, so we can show the first one, malignant heart. This is the caged heart of spellbreaking. This is the best thing that we could have done for this game. Because the game series has a certain tempo, a certain moment. Right, it was thematic to reduce only that element. They're just like they're worried that they're going to increase the damage of each class by 10 percent. Not so narrowly useful that you're not going to ever take it. So now it's just going to give you just generic damage reduction when you take elemental damage. And then our last one here for item updates is Temerity. Um, so we got a lot of feedback on this one. It's funny because when we launched the game, we thought that this item was crazy and going to be really, really good. Um, but then we realized due to the stats on it that it just wasn't hitting the attractiveness that we wanted. So even though this terrifies Fajnie, me, myślę, we're going to bump it up and see how it goes. We're going to replace the all stats affix with bonus stats life. Why do you not show this item before the barriers are going to be scaling with your maximum life? And they'll probably be working with other barrier legendaries where you need a barrier to do certain procs and stuff like that as well. So it's going to be a pretty good buff to this item and hopefully we'll see it in your life. So it's going to be a pretty good buff to this item and hopefully max life and increases healing builds. Yeah, so we have a ton of updates coming to the classes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that stuff. We literally just went through it. It's a, quite an a, almost like an encyclopedia of stuff uh, <laughs> that especially on the the barb and, and sorcerer uh, classes, but I will say that uh, it's nice to that we got some stuff in for the rogue, necromancer and yep. druid uh, players as well. 
uh, making sure that we kind of like buffed up some of the more undertuned stuff totally. that we had Actually, seen. Actually, one more caveat to all of that. I should have said this at the beginning. It's not final yet. Not final this yet. This is planned. That's why you probably saw the little The, the odds are very high. We do 90% of it or most of it, maybe even all. But um, as we get into the weeds of things and we're updating things, you know, some things may change. So this is our plan. It's very likely that we have at least games, most of it, if not all of it, but... It's not completely in the game yet, so... No, well, we so the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. always add a small caveat just because things are still going through testing right now on our side. Correct, and we it's going make through sure... testing, all that stuff. Yeah, so. we make sure not completely... I'll, I'm very yeah. careful. I always caveat, <laughs> not final until you see it in the game. I was being very cautious, but yes. it's, very it's cautious not about going to be... Yeah. You're not going to experience something that's totally different from what you just that's saw. Right. That's right. No. That's also why we're not releasing patch notes today. And we're going to actually discuss when patch notes will be released later on the screen. We'll reveal that. And... And one thing I Oni tam na zapleczu, nie? W Grinding Gear Games teraz też siedzą za kotarą piwka, piją, oglądają te mówię, ja pierdolę. Kurwa, że ja dzisiaj nie obejrzę tego, tej konferencji z Grinding Gear Games. Że oni tam tak system rozjebią. Minion builds and so forth in the future. Is that oh, something boy. you guys are still going to want to work on, look at in the future? I've been talking about this it. for a very long time. Um, yes. Uh, Jurid and Necromancer are a little bit different, so I guess I'll talk Necromancer first. Uh, so Necromancer Minions is absolutely a core fantasy of Necromancer players that minions are cool and awesome and that you can raise the dead and have the dead fight for you. That is, that is core. Um, minions, But, it turns out, in all games, not just ours, are, or summons or all that, are very complicated and hard to make work. Um, They have a lot of moving parts that are different than every other class and build archetype in many games. They have AI, they have a passive and active component to them typically. There's a lot going on. So in this patch, we're not touching the Necromancer stuff a lot. It is on the <laughs> team's radar of um, looking at the ways that they scale, looking at the ways <laughs> that they scale. Dobra, zaczynamy wymówki, chat. The, the Kolejna godzina z wymówek. Widzicie, no nie mogą naprawić um, minionów nekromanty, bo ciężko się robi miniony, no. Rozumiecie już? Jest ok? Widzowie, będzie szkama? O widzicie, to nie chodzi, że to tylko masz minionami grać nekromantą. Have just as many or more companions than the necromancer, and they're stronger. It's like, where well, is the fantasy of the necromancer if the druid does it better, right? So that was something that we contended with a lot. I'm sure that we're going to flex on that over time. We did add support. We still love companions. Ah, co nie nie czułem, że dwie klasy mogą działać na podstawie samonu, kurwa. Nie, problematyczne to jest dla nich. Design space and the fantasy of the different classes, right? We don't want all the classes to be exactly the same because then you don't feel different when you're playing. Ale one są exactly the same. Mechanics that are between them. We talk about that a lot on the team. It's very easy to be like. No nie, no ty po Diablo cztery mówi, że nie chcę, żeby ich klasy były identyczne. A kurwa, czym one się różnią? Speed is part of that where we overcorrected a little bit, where like we didn't want them to have a teleport or. Każda klasa polega dokładnie na tym samym. Na generowaniu right? zasobu i wydawaniu zasobu. Każda ma movement ability, każda ma ulta, każdy ma defensywne ability i ofensywne ability z lekkim cooldownem. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also interesting to see that the feedback, particularly on Druid companions, like we knew that they were really cool, but like yeah. the number of Druid players who are looking for more ways to kind of mm. make more companion focused builds is maybe a little bit higher than we expected. Yes. So <laughs> this is one of those situations where like kind of in response to the fact that players are really hoping, like Druid players are looking to go after this fantasy of like, I am the master of the animal kingdom and yeah. I'm going to have all these, these, these and nature, right? I'm going to have all these, uh, these buddies with me. I think there's it's it's kind of like moving our hand a little bit. It's like, oh yeah, actually there is something really cool here. We there is fantasy here for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you get that, yeah. But at this point, it's still very important. Oni stary tłumaczą się, że my wiedzieliśmy, że jak damy druidowi same mony, to ludzie będą próbowali robić buildy wokół same monów. No, to po chuj są te same mony, jak masz jak jak masz nie robić buildu wokół tego, nie kminie. We actually kind of hit on last week. Oh sure. Mi się wydaje, że jak robisz hack and slash. I dodajesz jakieś skilla, to od razu myślisz, jak będzie można zbudować build wokół tego skilla. No chyba to jest podstawa budowania kurwa pierdolonego hack and slasha, nie? So we've we've said a few times now that we're going to increase monster density in land redemption and health tides. The changes are in one one one. No w Diablo dwa wokół każdego skilla możesz zbudować build. Każdego. An image of an example. Po jak wokół każdego skilla możesz zbudować build. Yeah, so this current. is this is how it is today. Yeah. 
zmiany map, widzowie. Papri density buff, zobaczymy jaki będzie density. Uh, it's going to change, so you can see a lot more. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. There it is. Um, and this is really going back to, you know, we talked about... Yoki talk shit to that, CC! Uh, system for the lock-in of, uh, after you've achieved your build, being able to go in and, uh, you know, mow down large numbers of enemies, deal with large numbers of enemies. Um, that's sort of a, a, a core part of an ARPG. But we want to make sure that we're delivering, especially in the endgame content. So. A ludzie na co się wupi są. Oni się wupi zaraz. Chat, kto zrobi shota i policzy kropki? Ile jest więcej kropek? Procentowo, błagam, weź te siada i licz te kropki. So we've also been making sure dzięki Apple za suba, Baron, dzięki za suba, wariacie. Mi się wydaje, że jest 20% więcej, nie? Co nie się teraz tłumaczą, że nie mogą zwiększyć density, bo gra jest optymalizowana? Co jeśli, że oni stworzyli hack and slasha, który mają problem z zwiększeniem density, bo gra jest nie jest optymalizowana? Wejna, dzięki za suba. Wejna, x5. Right? And if it's not hitting Ej, ja tego nie czaję. Oni, oni się tłumaczą, że będą się przyglądać density. No kurwa, przecież to, to wystarczyło na to popatrzeć i stwierdzić, że nadal jest za mało, nie? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great goal for us to line ourselves around too. Right, so once we're able to capture more data from uh, players on live, we can see how players with different. Ja pierdolę, kurwa, to jest clown fiesta w chuj w tym blizardzie, nie? Rok miał rację, bez kitu. Rok mówił, że żartuje, ale miał rację. Wszyscy pracownicy blizarda, którzy potrafili robić gry, to zostali wypierdoleni za molestowanie. That's right. So we didn't talk about this last week, but we have gotten a lot of feedback before about the um about players, particularly like in World Tiers three and four, fighting like dungeon bosses and world bosses. Ale wy widzicie, że problemem Diablo 4 jest to, że nawet jak do nich dociera, że coś trzeba zmienić, to się okazuje, że się tego kurwa nie da zmienić. Problem ze Staszem, oni się tłumaczą, że jest problem to przerobić. Jest problem z Density, oni się tłumaczą, że jest problem przerobić Density. As players are going through them, we are also going to be making a change to the the rewards that you get going through these. Yeah. So now, like after 1.1.1 goes live, może oni kupili kurwa kod do tego Diablo 4 z Indii czy kichuj i nie mają nikogo, żeby im to przypisał. So once you've done that, or once you've killed those, you're going to have a guaranteed legendary item drop in that space, and that's going to carry up as well into our World Tiers 3 and 4. When you complete a Legion event. Uh, that's going to also give you a guaranteed legendary drop starting at level 35. You know, there's a chance before 35, but there's guaranteed at level 35. You're going to have one pop in. Um, and then another, another and Butcher is, has a 100% chance to drop a legendary as well, because um, he's a boss, of course. And then another really big one is we got, and I, this is funny, I did a, I did a, please don't follow me on Twitter unless you really want to see a lot of nerdy stuff. But the, uh, but the, I did a Twitter <laughs> poll a while ago, uh, where I basically just said, like, I said, like, you know, what do you think is the the chance which a, a treasure goblin will drop a legendary item? And I said it was like, you know, 10%, percent, uh, 25%, percent, 40%, percent, 50% percent with the four options. The majority of players uh, or uh, v uh, voters, I should say, right, uh, all selected uh, 10% percent was the uh, was the chance, and everybody had their sure. right. their own, you know, their their feelings on it as they were kind of going through it. But the reality is that level, and I said level 50, because we got one in part of this, uh, but the reality is that there's a 50% chance to drop legendary items today. Uh, and that's like going back to like level 35. They've got a very, very high uh, chance to drop legendary items. But, uh, so what you're saying is sometimes I kill a treasure goblin and it doesn't drop a legendary item. 
That's yeah, that's, yeah that's, exactly, that's exactly right. So they basically, if you play a quarter every 25 minutes, you know, that. you know, that's basically your chance to get a legendary <laughs> item when you fight each other. Like it's just two players, and they just called Diablo 4 and played 9,000 times. And then that's what happens to me every time. And as and as humans, we are seven times more likely to uh, to, to remember a negative thing than a positive thing. 9,000 times, which they called on them to play. This is nothing wrong with uh, with rather. There's nothing wrong with the player's perception. But about 8,999 relative to other content types. Pierdalanie pały kotikowi. That can feel bad. So what we decided to do is we've gone back and said starting right at level 15 for treasure goblins. 15. Blizzard zablokował sobie endgame na czacie. Oh, when you kill them from that point forward. So now when you see treasure goblins in the map, you start hearing them like snortling around in the in the corners of your your screen. You know you need to go fight that thing. You need to take it out. Ej, kurwa, bez kitus. No, we got that. Very, very early. So we think that's going to be like a really fun like update to kind of help. Get these things across. Fifty percent isn't useful in this case. Hundred percent, absolutely. We want you to feel like you're getting that power. Fifty percent more coin flip. Fifty percent coin flip. Yeah, actually, and probably more than fifty percent. Uh, I will know. Zablokowało się go dać. Zablokowało się go dać. Wonderful opportunity to drag in Gobby, the Goblin. Oh, uh, oh, the treasure into, Goblin into, into, into the frame. <laughs> should, I, should I try to pull this? We have a plush treasure yes, Goblin just we, off we, screen. We have a very large uh, plush. Here's there this is. giant treasure Goblin that Look. absolutely doesn't fit on camera at all. Look how happy he is. And now he's off camera. He's legendary now. Staring at Joe as he's literally talking about. We have a lot of other stuff to discuss. Staring at Joe as he's literally talking about killing him. So, yeah. They're um, happy to be of help. It is a it is a plush it is a plush creature. So yeah. I'm um, I know, uh, and so we I, we we talked uh, more about, uh, or you actually, um, we or when we were on the stream last yeah. week. Sorry, yeah. but about two weeks in a row, you guys. Yeah. Uh, we talked about um, respects and yeah. so forth. So I know that that is also coming in. Yeah, in one, one, one. we just want to confirm that uh, the stuff we said last week, we're going to reduce uh, respect cost by forty percent. Mm -hmm. um, players are going to get an extra stash tab. And uh, Elixir uh, stack count is going to go up to 99. Yeah, and the yeah. stash app is just purchasable, purchasable by gold. That's right. So, so that's yeah. just to make sure that people don't that's right. think we're just yeah. selling yeah. it. Tab 1 is 100k, tab 2 is yeah. 200k, tab 3 is 300k, tab 4 is going to be 400k. Yeah. Yeah. So you can buy that for your uh, seasonal uh, stash and for your eternal stash. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, and then uh, one other thing that uh, we did want to talk about, because this was a question that came up last week mm -hmm. uh, in regards to um, like the leaving dungeon uh, options and like teleporting. Out of dungeons and so Oho, ty, uh, mają odpowiedź na pytanie, zadanie poprzednio. Przygotowali się. Well so clear. Ta, so no, clear. na pewno, I, stary. I, there's, there's a loop there. I don't know why anyone's confused. This is very clear. Um, no, no, I, I'm just kidding. Jezu, Boże, kurwa, jak temu seconds. głupiemu dziecku ze szkoły mu powtórzyli pytanie na następnej lekcji. Is, I się mógł wyuczyć, have, kurwa. Uh, in Diablo 4 we have a mechanic ja where pierdole, when you're casting cringe, some kind of uh, spell ja or power, um, and you get hit by some damage, lead game directorowi powtarzają pytanie z poprzedniego Q&A i teraz ma odpowiedź. This makes things like town portaling back to town, leave dungeon, etc. feel a lot better. Saving a prisoner. Co? Czy wychodzenie pięciu sekundowe z dungeona zamiast trzy sekundowe jest lepsze teraz? But Um, we were worried about a case where you're in the middle of a high combat fight or in the middle of a boss fight and we felt like it was a little bit too easy to get out of get out of that um, in terms and that's actually what it's referring so to it's uh, 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 which again I felt like I felt like, <laughs> I felt like I nailed it but I guess I guess you know um, and so Yes, you know, there are other ways that we could have solved that, right? We could have said like, oh, well, you get pushed back on your cast or like, oh, well, it's only increased to five seconds if you're in a boss fight or something like that. But ultimately, um, you know, what players really accurately pointed out is, look, this slows down the core loop of the game of the game in a way that's not fun. Yeah. So we're just changing it back to three seconds. Yeah. So uh. it uh, <laughs> was at three seconds, went to five seconds, going back to three seconds because, you know, obviously good player feedback <laughs> uh, from, from everyone. So I've got one to... more bonus thing to talk about too. You so what, so you to feedback, so? obviously on the uh, end game experience tiers three and four and uh, 
you know, nightmare dungeons are a really big part of that. Last week we talked about how we were going to be uh, ensuring that the, the, the nightmare dungeon difficulty was scaled. Czyli generalnie, mm -hmm. jak coś nie przeszkadza, to się stało. Wychodzenie z dungeonu trwało 3 sekundy. Zmienili to na 5 sekund. W Q&A ich zapytali, po co to zmienili. Powiedzieli, że w sumie wydaje mi się, że to jest lepsze, ale że przyjrzą się temu. I teraz wytłumaczyli, dlaczego to zmienili na 5 sekund i zaczęli tłumaczyć, że 5 sekund jest lepsze od 3 sekund. Ale że w sumie chuj z tymi wracamy do trzech. Kurwa was. Jakie to są moralne fikoły tutaj się odpierdala. So a couple of the ones that we're we're actually going to be for now we're we'll removing a few of these uh, as we think about reworking them or deciding what we're going to do with them. Uh, but we're going to be taking these out in 1.1.1. They're not going to appear anymore. And um, that is uh, so. The first is resource drain. It's not going to be showing up in uh, Nightmare Citadel, uh, Citadels anymore. Uh, Cold Enchanted is not going to be showing up in Nightmare Citadels anymore. Diablo cztery ludzie jako grana jako jeden do czterech godzin na tydzień. No tylko wtedy w tydzień w nią pogra się tyle. No to jest taka gra od, od, no tak od godziny do 4 godzin max gameplay z niej wyciśniesz, nie? Tak średnio stówę za godzinę, nie? Jak, u, jak na rok się stary. Uh, Nightmare Dungeon affixes yeah. and yeah. everything, so mm -hmm. it's great that we've been able to jump on a few of the ones that we know are problematic. Uh, with the community and kind of pull them out and reevaluate and see what we can end up doing. So, um, we did, uh, uh, obviously, we talked about uh, the the date for the patch notes beforehand. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> but we we do want to specify like uh, that we are going to be releasing patch notes, uh, full patch notes next week. It's actually going to be on August second next week on Wednesday. Jak nie potrafisz czegoś zrobić mądrze, no to musisz zapierdalać fizycznie. Widzowie, to jest, słuchajcie, temat przewodni tego stand-upu brzmi, dlaczego nie byłeś kłamać w końcu gejście? Tuesday after. Oh, sorry. It is, no, I lied. It is August 8. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is this is dates. Just Everything's blind. Blind. Right. Uh, August 8. Uh, sorry. August 2nd is when the patch notes will be coming out yeah. in full, and then August 8th is when the patch it's will actually hit. After. Sorry, I apologize. I've had a lot of dates in my head over the past couple of weeks. Do you smego sierpnia będzie przeczekać na patch? That's also part of the patch notes. But we'll be posting those. So make sure to stay tuned. Of course, on the social media. A Baldur drugiego wychodzi, nie? Dobra, nikt to nie będzie grał. Just remember the patch is not that big. We're just posting them early so that players can actually see them. This goes back to exactly how we were talking about that we want to. Better communicate uh, these notes here, similar to how we're doing this here on this uh, campfire chat. And then, of course, August 8th is when the patch will end, uh, end up going. Did you see Robi Liga? Changes that uh, we are kind of detailing out here, and they'll be seeing in the final patch notes on Wednesday next week. Um, we do want to jump into Q and A because we just went through Ale a whole bunch of stuff right here. Trzeciego coś um, wejdzie, a ósmego patch that, uh, będzie live. As, as we start to populate questions, feel yeah, free to ask you, in chat, uh, on Twitch, by the way, because we have chat enabled there. Um, but I know one question and something that we talked about last week. Aż trzeciego uh, baldu. We're waiting for questions to no, ale co oni powiedzieli, was, że patch, uh, aha, że wydadzą patch note. Uh, in, in later game, uh, or for, for late game players and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do we have any update and uh, in regards to that? Uh, specific topic. Yeah, I can talk about that. So we did talk about this last week, and what we said then was that, you know, we are not looking to make the game feel slower across the board. We're not looking to like slow down the players' like XP gain rate in response to like feedback about some of the other changes that we had made. You know, the goal was really we want to make sure the players are having a good time progressing through World Tiers three and four, not feeling like they're hitting a point where it's just it's really really difficult to make progress. Mm -hmm. So in response to some of these thoughts, we you know we had be, we had gone through and we had. Uh, you know, raise the amount of experience that you gain uh, from, like before, actually, before the uh, the the, the 1.1 patch. When we, we raised raise the amount of experience gain you get from, um, from Nightmare Dungeon, Nightmare Dungeon yeah. completion, from uh, Helltide cash opening, right. uh, from Whisper completion. Like, we went and did a good buff on those yeah. those activities to make them feel uh, juicier as part of that. And now we're going through and we're updating uh, density inside the Nightmare Dungeons and yep. on in, in health areas as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, so all of these, this, all this to say, to we, are, to to we are committed to increasing the speed which players are progressing through these later world tiers. We don't, we're not happy with the speed at which uh, players are getting through some of this content. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and the kind of behavior of incentivizing oh, as a result of that, right? We want to make sure that players feel that they can play the way that they want and they can progress at a, at, a, at, a, at a decent pace. But now that we've made a number of these changes, we do want to see what the impact's going to be on the overall like uh, XP gain rate across yeah. the board for players and just seeing how different kinds of players are progressing. Yeah, but yeah, so when we go through and we make changes, which we will be making uh, soon, I think probably yeah. likely for uh, season two, yeah. uh, when we go through and we make these changes, that's going to be uh, informed by what we see players going through and what their experience is like now. Yeah, exactly. So it's really just a question of like how much are we going to make adjustments, like what's going to feel right, and that's going to be based on like what we see from players. Mm -hmm. um, we have... Uh, Two people actually asking pretty similar <laughs> questions, but uh, one was specifically calling out Adam Jackson and his thoughts on this, but, oh boy, uh, but they both are very similar questions. One is from uh, Febzilla, the other one's from Carnaga. I'm, I'm so sorry, can I just jump in really yes. quick? Can I, ask, can I ask chat a question? Do you, yes or no, do you want Adam to read the names of people that he's getting the questions from? Uh, I, I, no. I think we that should. Adam. Yes. Okay, he's saying he should. Okay. I, I think we should just because I don't want to go into that whole situation. Like, oh, where fine, that other, fine, fine. That other outlet okay, okay. made up names and we don't do that. So. Sure. Um, but uh, Karnaga and Febzilla, uh, they both ask about... Uh, people are all like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, honestly, well you know. honestly, no, it would make my job so much easier. I know. I I wish please I could. finish your question. Well, we're going to read these at least. Read, read but, these, so. that, the question is about crowd control. Um, okay. Obviously, yeah. uh, it is a huge and, and uh, popular topic amongst the community. Uh, what are our thoughts about crowd control? What are we planning on doing about that um, here in the future? I bet we all have thoughts on that, actually. We do, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, let me let me just say first that, yeah. that um, uh, we think that there's there as you get into situations where there are lots of monsters on screen and high end areas where um, the amount of damage that you're seeing going in and out is is uh, really high, so you're you're having to react really quickly. Situations where you're being uh, Hard, hard CC'd, or like stun or freeze or something like that, can be much more impactful than they are when the uh, intensity and the pace of combat is lower. Yes, do you want to make changes to CC to uh, make that experience more fun? Um, we we want to do that. It's not in one one one, um, but that's. This is the thing that we're looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's Part, larger, larger CC stuff that yeah. we're discussing internally yeah. that we want to kind of pair with a, a few of the big changes we have planned in the yeah. future. In fact, we're working on we're working on stuff like that for that right now. Yeah. 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 Ale to ma, to ma badane um, rozwiązanie wywodzące się z uwowa. Każdy kolejny CC ma procentowy skrócony czas trwania. Do momentu aż czwarte dostaje się there, milna. Pierwszy ma 100%, drugi ma 40 i 50%, trzeci ma 25%. A do czwarte dostaje się milna na kilkanaście sekund. Those are addressed in 111. We just didn't list all the bug fixes and stuff like that. There's a whole lot of bug fixes. So you guys will see those the final notes and everything, but those are addressed in uh, in this specific update, and it's something that I know a lot of people have been asking, going like, well, I can only add one point, yet it says I can add three, and so forth, so yep. Um, yep. Uh, most definitely being addressed in that. Um, we've actually just been getting a, a general uh, decent amount of questions related to resistances and what the intent is going to be with resistances here in the future. Uh, there's a <laughs> ton of questions, so lots of so things. Uh, sure, 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 um, yeah. uh, I guess, like, what's the vision sure. on resistances here yeah, in the future? Yeah, I, I talked about it a little bit. Um, the vision is kind of, I think, what the standard vision of most games is, which is everything is impactful and meaningful and feels good, and you invest and get rewarded for those things. All 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 but, you know, reality is a little bit harder than that, but that is kind of the, the North Star and what we're trying to do. Um, <laughs> the idea is that when you... When you invest in elemental resistances, you will notice a difference in the damage that you take. Uh, we don't want just, you know, armor or damage or anything that's like you can't stab and it's just way better than everything else. That that's the only thing you care about. Um, it is tough to find a perfect balance there of what, how impactful some things should be versus others. Um, and then, uh, Jak ta, przecież to jest w ich grze i poe przekopiowały resistance ich gry. There's a lot of gray area there that we're talking about, but our goal Co is that when we, we would go and really take a deep dive at it. Jest jak nie to w kurwie, jak oni, jak oni tłumaczą to Diablo 4, jakby to był zupełnie jakiś nowy typ gry, którego nikt wcześniej nie stworzył i trzeba przeprowadzać cały czas głębokie badania na temat tego, co się w grze dzieje. 
Kurwa, przecież od 30 lat, kurwa, takie slashy istnieją prawie. I cały czas można wnioski wyciągać. The choices between like armor for mitigation, for damage resistance based on passives, legendary powers, okay. you know, uh, glyphs and paragon nodes. That's that those things are impactful, and that resistance plays a really, really important. No, role. bądź firmą, która stworzyła gatunek, bądź w tym gatunku i nie potrafi wyciągnąć wniosku z niego. So it means that some players will be able to do that. They are not going to have a predictable amount of resistance when they go into an encounter, which means that we just need to think about what that is going to feel like for that player. And imagine a world where they are able to still complete the content. It's much more effective to have. No, so generally, it's just because the rest is still organized. So, there will be situations where we are going to ensure that if you are getting into a critical fight with a creature, you know, you don't have the mind when you go into that fight. You're going to be penalized for that. That's going to be a really, really difficult situation for you. You know, but we are, you know, trying to balance against the general flow of the Diablo Four DLC. It's today. It's going to try to like remake it into a entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. It's going to try to like remake it into an entirely different experience. Which I think is. Do you guys realize that resistances don't feel like they're hitting that goal right now? That's right. We do realize. Yes. Yes. We're gonna make changes. Yes. All right. Sounds good. There is a lot of questions about mounts and how like we know we've gotten a lot of feedback about mounts. We've seen Carbot videos. Our friend Carbot animation made an episode about about mounts. Very funny. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend checking it out. Um, but uh, are, are there any um, uh, discussions? Are, are you guys aware? Like, what, what are you guys planning on doing uh, in re in relation to mounts? Yeah, there are a few changes here. So um, we want to make mounts feel better, sort of broadly speaking. And a couple of those things are um, mounts have been the life size. Sure that uh, the boost feels really good, especially with controller. <laughs> Um, where it's it's underperforming and uh, <laughs> uh, the boost actually uh, <clears throat> the boost mechanic on the mounts um, it actually stacks. Uh, there's a bug right now um, with that on controller where it's not stacking properly. We're gonna fix that. Um, and um, uh, there's a few other there's a, a key part of this is that the mount gets stuck on things and that's that's. Może zrobią tak, że mu będą zadawać pytania, jeżeli będzie kolejny gathering on odpowiedź. Bo znowu ma problem. In, in theory, the idea that you're riding through an area and some bandits or some skeletons have set up a barricade for you, um, and you have to sort of like dismount and fight all those skeletons, like that sounds like a fun idea. Um, cool. <laughs> it doesn't exactly play out that way. Um, you're just sort of annoyed, um, and you're like, well, can I like, kind of ride around the top of the barricade? And then it's a fight about whether the collision actually touches. Anyway. Uh -huh. yep. uh, <laughs> Uh, we're gonna fix that. So there are some some good changes to mounts um, coming. Czy mu kolorki na przykład diablo są w kolorach plagi transgender? A co przyzony jest coś kurwa? Co myśli, że demon sobie piekle nie może płci kurwa zmienić? Co kurwa masz problem z tym jakiś? Myśli, że na przykład demony w piekle nie są gejami? Czasami? Um, I know with uh, patch 1.1.0, there was a uh, update related to a, a, a memory leak that we ended up addressing. Uh, but then in 1.1.1, uh, and I, I know that QA and so forth, our, our, our QA team has been working really closely with our graphics engineering team and testing out uh, a fix that's going to be coming in there that should be helping out a lot of those players uh, and making sure that uh, VRAM stays stable throughout the, the, their gameplay and so forth. So uh, that will also be in uh, 111. Uh, it's a popular question. I know a lot of people have been uh, hitting me up on Czyli that one specifically. Um, uh, there was a question earlier about uh, Zamotał się 5 minut i gadał, że będą lepsze i... Jezu, nie kuli go wyjemią z tego projektu, ten typ jest takim niogarem. Gałem co inni oni myślą, kurwa, w imię Diablo 4. That was different than crit and felt meaningfully different than players' that had kind of a unique mechanic attached to it. Um, 
where overpower sits now is that I, I really I, the idea of it I think is really cool, which is it rewards you for building a really tanky character and you get a yes, big hit of damage. That's really awesome. um, it also scales off of your max health and then current health percentage. I think it's with four to five. So normally these Diablo 4 is to do it. So we're trying to add another avenue like of, hit, of crit, to do that. And then the other thing that's unique about overpower and how we didn't want to just turn into critical strike Jezu, ale wy to widzicie, że oni mają problem z podstawowymi mechanikami swojej gry? To jest kolejny czat, tłumaczą, dlaczego jest problem z kolejną mechaniką w grze. And then the idea is that you can, however, get guaranteed overpowers by doing certain mechanics. So the Druid has some, the Necromancer has some, where it's like, hey, you do this thing, and the next one is guaranteed. So you can still play around it, but unlike crit, where you're chasing the random <laughs> chance to get higher and higher and higher to get those procs, overpower just naturally happens kind of rarely, and then the builds that can use it get it guaranteed. And then that you have to different use the scale. Like the problem right now tylko to jest deterministycznie really to się nazywa, że się nabija. Kurwa! Nie, oni gadają o mechanikach i nawet nie potrafią ich nazwać fachowo. Widać, że to nie są prawdziwi ludolodzy. Jemu chodzi o deterministyczność nabijania się procentowej szansy. All of these vectors, and not even just overpower, but there's some other ones I know I'm thinking I can't say. Like we want, when we give you a fantasy as a player, whether it's baseline or via legendaries and uniques, that you're able to build that into the late game and it's delivered on and you can actually scale and be just as good as anybody else. That's the goal. That will always be the goal. We're not there yet, obviously, but that's kind of the intent. Overpower is another stat that you can actually chase meaningfully. You have lots of other stats too that it combines with to make a build, and that's kind of the point. Awesome. Sorry, I was just this build for overpower. I don't know if this this group up here can fully answer, but it's something that we can build for overpower. The zooming in and zooming out on your character, getting a wider look of gameplay and so forth. I know there's obviously big performance implications to that because it increases the draw distance. To nie jest po to robisz build na kurwa cast and crit albo cast and damage taken. Because even when it does zoom out on bosses and so forth, there's like some some resolution or scale and so forth. Jest jak jakim zdury pierdolo. Please don't kill me, engineers, if I'm saying that wrong. But, <laughs> but uh, maybe that's another uh, topic we can bring up during like a, another campfire chat with engineers, uh, uh, possibly to to maybe clarify a little bit on that or or so. Or we can just follow up uh, separately after after the campfire chat. But I know that's a a question that a lot of people. Have been um, and then there's, a, uh, there's questions regarding um, uh, are there any additional uh, options for. Customization down the road that you guys are looking at, like pets or things, etc. I know it's something that we're looking at and evaluating, just depending on like player feedback. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, you know, obviously creating additional more content for the player base. Right now, we're very focused on, Uh, but uh, we felt that right now what was really important is helping sorcerers, helping barbarians, yeah. and um, some of these other buffs to classes. And I think there's, uh, uh, we'll do this one last question uh, here before, before we end the stream, but one uh, thing that people have been asking about is like all the changes that they, they're seeing today, is this like encapsulating everything that we're doing. We had a question in here uh, regarding like, for instance, someone enjoyed playing uh, a frozen orb sorcerer mm -hmm. in, in uh, like, Diablo 2, for instance, and wanting to mm. have that same type of fantasy in Diablo 4. Do you guys plan on doing additional adjustments in the future regarding other builds or sure. other, like creating uh, variability across that? Sure, no, absolutely. Uh, this patch, uh, you know, I talked a little bit about like we have our short-term goals and long-term things we're thinking about. Um, Forevermore long term, really infinitely long term, is the idea that you know every fantasy that we sell you. I can talk a lot about. I talk to the team about this all the time. And by sell, we yeah, all right, yeah, sell is probably the bad word. But I, I think that we've like we're advertising we, it. Like if you see it on legendary aspects, every fantasy, that's really what I mean. If you see it on is, passives, you see yes. it on skill tags. Like we're saying, like, hey, look, this is a cool thing for you when to go after. When we show you something yeah. that is cool and awesome, yeah. we deliver on it, right? Like when you log into Necromancer, so, you see right away. So you must be busy when you show when we show you something that is cool. And awesome, thing, right? we and deliver on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of those things should be delivered on and be awesome. And then 
As you go through the game, when you get legendaries and uniques, you should Ty powie się pojebało, on myślę, że to już jest stream z Exilconu. D4 dowozi, no ale kurwa same siebie na pigalaka. We either buff it or redesign it in such a way that it's that it's hitting the mark and it's attractive and ideally yes, it's all fun and exciting for players to chase. Like that's always what we're going to be trying to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this isn't exhaustive forever. We are always going to be adapting and updating things. And if something just really isn't working, even if it's like something that I made, I have no hubris about like, hey, that thing it was awful. Make it something good, right? Like at the end of the day, the players are the ultimate. Uh, judge jury and executioner for us of exactly. like did it work is it good is it fun yes or no if not then we have to be uh, malleable right. enough to change that right and we could be looking at data too we could be seeing yeah. like how many players are picking what kinds of passes Absolutely. what kind of aspects they're the wearing what kind of uniques are they using like so we, we say, hey, you know, so like we know when, like, if no hey, one's hey, like a particular aspect aspect. Like spotkania marketingowe like, cool. that's clearly something do do we want to look at the data that they can look at the statistics but kurwa the good fest weź to ktoś zapisz best game that can be and the reality is this is Można this wziąć statystyki pod uwagę czego gracze używają a czego nie używają. Yeah. Awesome. To dobre, well, nie? Uh, we have a ton of changes that are coming up for 111 that you guys got to see here especially for class changes. Mm -hmm. Uh thanks Adam for kind of walking us yeah, through totally. everything yeah. and then, um we do have final patch notes coming next Wednesday that is mm -hmm. August 2nd so just Revealed. a reminder on that. Revealed full where yeah. people can read through them uh and you know provide full feedback and so forth and then of course uh, that's my tick. Someone called me out my tick earlier, the, oh. and so forth. Ah. Stop that, Adam. <laughs> that's my tick. I will, I will stop that one day. I oh. probably won't. Uh, and but we actually do have our uh, patch for one one one. The date will be on August eighth as well. So uh, players can expect patch notes next Wednesday, and then of course one 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 hitting on August eighth, which is Tuesday. So. Looking forward to seeing uh, everyone's feedback, everyone jumping in, uh, and uh, checking out, of course, the new changes coming to all, pretty much every class now, <laughs> and in regards to uh, balance changes and so forth. Uh, oh, now you're in your own oh, head now, of now, 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 now I'm just stuck in this, like, my, my own empty room saying it over and over. Uh, but anyway, and, give us, and give us feedback on how this went, like and yeah, how you like yeah. this this format for talking yeah, about patch notes. Exactly. Yeah, we we want to see if uh, this works out really well with the community. So yeah, please provide feedback. Uh, us going through the notes and then of course releasing the notes afterwards. Um, it's, feedback, it's a huge help for us and how to communicate with you guys uh, out in the community. So uh, thank you guys again. We hope you uh, enjoyed this. Uh, Campfire Chat Plus Plus, New Game Plus Plus. Sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, we will see you uh, on our next stream, which uh, we haven't announced on. We're thinking about doing some Campfire Chats with like maybe other teams here, uh, whether it's our uh, art animation teams, uh, audio teams, and so forth, just so you guys can see uh, kind of a, a deeper look into some of the development uh, within uh, our seasons and Diablo 4 uh, from other people. So we do plan on uh, expanding these a little bit more. And of course, having campfire chats and dev update streams uh, to talk more about the game, gameplay, and design, and so forth. Uh, <laughs> you did it again. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you again for the Diablo 4 team here guess. at Blizzard. And uh, yeah, have a great Friday. Thanks, everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, over. I ludzie na zmianę piszą. Big L Win WL WL Power Path of Exile Exile <laughs> Lose Win Lose Win Lose Win Dobra, policzył ktoś te kropki? Jest zrobiony shot z tych kropek? Widzowie ja liczę te kropki, nie? Bo. Eee, bo to będzie giga ten Gdzie są szoty u mnie na kanale e, Czy coś się zmieniło, tak jeżeli ktoś chciałby jakieś takie podsumowanie, czy e, Nagle będzie fun to play, gierka? E, nie <ścoughs> Density, dobra, widzowie, uwaga Density, liczymy e, Density przed zmianami Uwaga, liczę 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 
33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 5, 6, to liczyłem, 46, 7, 8, 9, 50, to jest 54, 55, 57, 8, 9, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 71, 72, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 83, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 103, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 102, 105, 106, 7, 8, 9, 110, 111, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, tak na oko. No hope at all. Versus, uwaga. Hello, creeps. Jeden pominąłem. To ile jest? To jak duży pominąłem? To ile jest? Jest 116 naliczyłem. 116 naliczyłem mniej więcej. 117. Dobra, to liczymy teraz po zmianie density. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 81, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 14, 17, 18, 118, 119, 120, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 130, tak? 100... 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 150, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 170, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 176, czyli mamy 176 do, ilu tam było? 117, tak? Czyli mamy zwiększenie... 178 mówicie, 178 do 116, 116 razy 0,5 to jest ile? 58, 116, 116 razy 1,5, 50% dodali density, tak? 50% density w Nightmare Dungeonach, to to nadal nie, tak jakby 170 mobów w dungeonie, to nadal moim zdaniem nie jest duże jak na hack and slasha, nie? Tylko, że to jest tylko w Helltide'ach i tylko w dungeonach, a nie na świecie. Tu tak powinni... Tak, tak mi się wydaje, że na dungeon to szczerze powinno być, kurwa... 500 mobów. Jak miałbym powiedzieć, ile bym chciał w dungeonie zobaczyć mobów, to bym powiedział, że tak... No, 400 może. 400 powiedzmy. Ale w sensie tutaj czasem są grubsze kontury, no i liczę wtedy, jak jest grubszy kontur, widać, że są dwa na sobie czy coś, nie? Zależy od dangę, mi się wydaje, że w niektórych by się zmieściło z 500. No. A teraz ile, ile jest średnio da mobów w dungeonie w Poe? Kurwa, dawaj, streamuję ten? Yy, dawaj, yy, zaraz pijama też zrobię. Gdzie jest pijam? Streamuję pijam? Exilecon. Siema, pijam. Uwaga. 
a portale możecie dobrać w ciągu dwóch dni, oglądając sumarycznie. Ja mam pijam, ile jest poe. średnio mobów, w, mobów na mapce w Więc POE. Tak. Ale mam niską jakość. Pijam, ten internetu chyba nie ma. No to ja nie mam. Ile jest średnio mobów na mapie w POE? Około. Zależy, jaką robi, jaki robisz Atlas, Kiszak, ale tak mniej więcej, jak ja robię mapy, to jest około tysiąca mobów. Na mapie. <laughs> Może trochę więcej nawet. To bardzo zależy od jakie, jakie mapy robisz. Tak ogólnie. Bo są mapy, gdzie jest po kilkanaście tysięcy. Mobów. Tak jak Firefly'e, gdzie 5 minut... Diablo zwiększone density jest po 180 mobów teraz. Nie jest Diablo mobów twórcy na mapie. Mobów. Jęka to max? Jęka max. 121 mobów. Słuchajcie, no widzę, Jakuba starali się. Dalej. No nie, ale w okolicach tysiąca myślę, że normalny gracz może mieć. Jeśli ktoś dżusuje mapy pod pack size, to kilka tysięcy mobów. Myślę, że około... taki dżus map to jest około 4 tysiąca mobów. Emferzy musieliby mnie tutaj po ten... Ja że musieliby Co jest jeszcze poprawić, dobra mapka? Do to jest 20 razy mapy. więcej mobów niż teraz właśnie po bafie, kurwa. Dla nich było szokiem, że po inaczej. No tak, to prawda. Ja pierdolę. 